Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this video. Glad you guys are, are here with us today. Um, we're going to be talking about circles today, and, and as I've repeated myself several times as we went through this entire chapter, everything builds on itself. So if you don't understand something previous, what we're about to work on probably isn't going to make sense. But the good thing about what we're transitioning to today, um, it, it really uh, builds on something you've known for several years. Um, and, and we were connecting with something that we learned earlier on in geometry, and, and it's not a real difficult concept. So, uh, again, you're taking notes on what you are viewing right now. You're going to show the sub the notes. Um, I've told the sub specifically what I want to see. Uh, I want to see pictures. I want to see things written out so that when you leave this classroom, you have something with you that you know you can go back and reference if you have to. You don't have to pull up your internet and try to watch this video all over again. Uh, so taking a look at the first part, a couple things that we have to cover. One of the most basic concepts when we start talking about circles is how do we identify congruent circles? Earlier this year we talked about congruent triangles and we know congruent triangles have to have the congruent corresponding parts. But there really isn't any parts to congruent circles, two circles in general, okay? Well, we have a radius, we have a diameter, we've got the center, we've got the uh, outside points of the circle. And so how do we identify congruent circles? It's one simple concept. They all have to have congruent radii. Okay, for those of you that don't know, radii is the plural of radius, okay? Don't ask me about the, the English, why it goes to radii instead of radies. Um, I'm not good with English. Talk to one of your English teachers. So, anyways, congruent radii. Uh, central angle, as we talked yesterday, has to be the same as the arc measure. Or the arc measurement, either way. Um, and we'll review that concept here in just a second. Uh, the semicircle, hopefully you remember from yesterday, is identified as being equal to half the circle or 180 degrees, semi meaning half, half the circle. Uh, minor arc is going to be less than 180 degrees. And then obviously major arc is going to be greater than 180 degrees. Now I should probably note the minor arc has to be greater than zero degrees. Hopefully that's redundant common sense. Uh, the major arc has to be greater than 180 but less than 360. We won't cover any arcs greater than 180 uh, this year. So. Uh, how are semicircles and major arcs identified? Well, if you remember, I'm going to start with the minor arc. All you need is two points, two points to identify, I'll put ID, to identify uh, a minor arc for a semicircle and a major arc, you need three points. So please don't forget that for your tests and quizzes because um, it helps to know what direction we're going, what part of the circle we're working with when you use those three points, and that's why we need them. And so um, just keep that in mind. All right. Now, here's where we start to make connections with what we've learned earlier this year, what you learned probably in fifth, sixth, seventh grade. Uh, the distance around a circle is called the circumference. Reminds me of the old math joke, who was the first knight of the Knights of the Round Table? His name was Circumference. Ha, 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 ha. Anyways, uh, I actually looked that up online because I remembered it. There's an actual book that you can read to little kids about the Knights of the Round Table and Circumference. So if you want to Google that, it's kind of a cute little book. Um, to find the distance around the circle, if we're starting here and moving all the way around, remember from earlier on this year, Circumference is going to be pi times diameter, okay, pi d. Now, uh, obviously, hopefully remember this is the radius, okay, and the diameter is going to go all the way across. So if I was to go ahead and do that, remember that this is the diameter, okay. And so in this case, the diameter is going to be 8 centimeters. Now, uh, for most of your homework problems and the problems that we're going to be working on here as examples, all of the answers will be in terms of pi. So just reminding you what that means, if the diameter is 8 
the pi just comes straight down and this answer in terms of pi is going to be 8 pi. Okay, why do we use that? It's more exact rather than the approximation of the rounding to the nearest tenths place. So it's simple. You don't have to do any math. Right there, 8 pi, done. Okay? Uh, if I wanted to do the other one, hopefully you recognize the circumference of this one. With the diameter being 12, the answer would be 12 pi centimeters. Okay? One quick note, we've been talking a lot about uh, length and area, and eventually later on this year we'll talk about volume. Uh, the length around the circle is the circumference. Notice there's no squared here because it's not an area. The length around the circle is the circumference. So, moving on, here's where you really need to start to focus. So I'd like you to pause your computer right now and go ahead and draw this circle. I'll be asking the sub to make sure that you have this circle drawn out uh, and, and worked out. So go ahead and pause your computer. I'll wait a second and do that for me. All right, now, uh, we want to determine the length of the arc. Now, arc AB is a minor arc. There's only two points. It starts here, and it's going to go all the way over to here. Okay. So how far is this portion of the circle if, if that's all the further we're traveling? What would that distance be? Well, hopefully, some of you are starting to recognize, hmm, can I determine what portion of the circle that's going to be? I've seen a lot of students in the past go ahead and do this. And if that helps, go ahead and do that. Now, what portion of the circle is that minor arc AB? Well, it's, it's one-fourth of the circle. Okay? And the circumference of the circle is going to be 4 and 4, 8 pi centimeters. And if we go ahead and say that this minor arc is one-fourth of that, meaning to multiply, the distance that we are traveling to go from here all the way over to here is going to be 2 pi centimeters, exactly 2 pi centimeters, okay? So hopefully that one was pretty simple, 1 fourth of 8 pi, 2 pi, okay? All right, now, I'd like you to go ahead and do the same thing with this one, draw this one out, label all the parts. You're going to notice here that the arc, arc ACB, is this arc right here, okay? That's the one we're referring to. We're not talking about the other semicircle, we're talking about this semicircle, okay? And pause your computer, draw the picture, see if you can figure out what the calculations would be to figure out that distance along that circle. Go ahead and do that. Well, hopefully you recognize that this portion of the circle is, is actually half of the circle. And if the circumference again is going to be 8 pi, well that's a real simple calculation, half of 8 is 4. So there's the distance that you would travel along this arc, given that diameter. Okay? Alright, let's do another one. Alright, go ahead and do this one. Draw it out again. Okay, label the, the, the points on the arc. Now this one has three points, arc ACB. And so we are actually talking about this major arc along that portion right there. Okay? And I, again, I encourage you, think about this, because this is how you really start to understand what's going on behind the scenes of the calculations. See if you can figure out what the arc length is going to be for arc ACB. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go back to what we did on the very first one. Uh, that was a poorly drawn line. I'm not a very good artist, but I like to try to be somewhat accurate. If I go ahead and draw on that line like that, like that, C just seems to lie along the diameter there from A to C. So uh, hopefully you recognize that this is 
three of four. This, this portion of the circle is going to be three of four parts. So I'm going to put three-fourths of, again, if this radius is four, the whole length is eight, eight pi. And again, if we do those calculations, six pi centimeters. So if you have in any way gotten any of those first three right, that's awesome. Okay. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now that those are basic. Okay. Uh, what we are working for is to prove any other types of, of combinations of portions of circles. So go ahead and again draw this one out. And, and this one's going to be a little bit more challenging. All right. Um, as you do that, I'll continue to talk. Go ahead and draw that out. The reason this one's more challenging is we don't know what portion of the circle this is. Okay? As we look down here, you know, we, we, it's not broken up into a half or a fourth or three fourths. And so what do we do from here? Well, uh, I guess the easiest way to describe what's happening, if we look at all the previous problems, we had 8 pi as part of it. We know that's the perimeter of the figure. The perimeter of the figure is definitely going to be 8 pi. But as far as what this ratio is going to be right here, what that fraction is going to be, that's what we really need to figure out. Where does this guy come from? Okay? Where does 1 half come from? And where does 1 fourth come from? Okay? I'd really encourage you to take a moment and just try to think about that before you move on. Challenge yourself. Say, where is there any way we can look at that circle and get one fourth out of what we're already given? That's what you really need to know. And if you can figure that out, then you can figure out what the formula is going to be. Okay? All right, so where does the one fourth come from? Well, you notice here the central angle is 90. That makes this arc measure 90. And what we're really talking about is it's 90 of how many total degrees? Well, I hope you said 360. And if you reduce 90 over 360, you get 1 fourth. And that's where that 1 fourth comes from. Okay? If you look at the next one, what's the measure of this arc over here? Well, I hope you said 180. And if you take the 180 out of the total, 360, you get your one, four, one half. And again, that's where your one half comes from. So <clears throat> I hope you're catching on to this. The measure of arc ACB, if we look here, well, each of these angles, right? And so 90 plus 90 plus 90 is 270. If you were to put into your calculator 270 divided by 360, some of you guys can use that sacred AVC button on your calculator. Some of you can't, but if you can't, you get 0.75, which I hope all of us would know becomes the three-fourths there. Okay? And so if we carry the same concept over to the last problem, how do I go about figuring out what that ratio is going to be? Well, in each of the previous problems, we figured out what the arc was. So it's going to be 50 degrees. You can put 50 over 360 and multiply that by 8 pi and it should give you the correct answer. Now, sometimes I may want you <coughs> to answer this in, in, in a fraction format and here's how you would do that. Uh, if, I was to re if I were to rewrite this, let's see here, 50 over 360 times, and I'm going to put 8 pi over 1. I'm going to divide both of these by 10, getting rid of the zeros there. That's real simple. Um, just reduce the fraction, basically, to 536. And then I'm going to multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. Okay. Now, you will notice 40 over 36 does reduce to 10 ninths. So I'll put 10 pi over 9. And that can you rewrite that as 1 and 1 ninth pi. Either of those answers would be acceptable as far as a fraction form, as far as I'm concerned. Okay? But what I want you to know is that these, all three of these are the same. These two are the most accurate, and again, that would be in centimeters. Um, but if you were to do it to the nearest tenths place, 1.1 1 
if I was to try to put all the decimals out, 1.1 repeating pi centimeters. Okay, notice the pi never goes away if I'm answering it in terms of pi. If, if in the directions of your homework tonight it says to the nearest tens place, it no longer designates in terms of pi, you will want to go ahead and calculate pi into the answer. Uh, so for example, you would take 10 times pi, get 31 point, uh, Four going on. I don't even have the, all the numbers, some of the numbers memorized off the top of my head. But uh, you get 31.4 and then divide that by 9. Uh, again, don't round anything until you get to your final answer because rounding before your final answer just becomes further and further from the actual answer. I'll discuss more of that later. So, can you determine the formula one could use to determine the arc length of any circle? Well, uh, I hope you saw and you can write this out in your paper there, uh, arc length, the formula, is going to be this. In each of these problems, we found what was this. I hope you identified that as the arc measure. So you can do arc measure, measure over 360, and then we're going to multiply that by, what was this right here? It was the circumference, pi times diameter. Okay, uh, circumference. All right. Now, uh, there is another way to go ahead and do this if you would prefer to do a proportion. Uh, proportionally, I'll write this out. Proportion, it's the same formula. Proportion. You could do it this way. Uh, again, it's going to start out arc measure over 360 equals um, the arc length over circumference, pi times diameter. Okay. Now, I will just tell you this. This arc length, because we're trying to find it in all the problems, will always be x. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay. And so that's how you would go about figuring out um, the arc measure or arc length using proportions. So it's the same formula. Uh, I personally have always known this one, so this is the one I use, but you'll get the same answer either way. Uh, just a couple other things that I want to make sure that you know and understand for tonight and future homework references. Uh, it's very important that you do not confuse arc measurement with arc length, okay? Arc measurement with arc length. A lot of students on the test say, you know, like, they want to give me an arc measure when I'm asking for a degree. I mean, uh, um, let me repeat that again. They want to give me a degree when I'm asking for arc length, okay? Length has to be in feet, meters, centimeters, okay? Not a degree. So know and understand the difference between those two. So what is an arc measurement? Again, it's equal to the central angle. Measurement. And you can put degrees. Okay, that'll be very important. Arc measurement is always in degrees, where arc length, uh, you have your formula, but I would put something like it'll be in feet, yards, centimeters, uh, miles. Okay, it'll be in some form of, of length measurement. Okay, not in degrees. One last little note you will have one problem tonight that deals with concentric circles. Uh, if any of you are into archery or uh, throwing darts, dartery, I don't even know if that's a word. Um, circles that lie in the same plane and have the same center are called concentric circles. So if you notice here, uh, I put down think archery target or dartboard. Uh, you've got all these circles in the same plane, which would be the board in this case, okay? And they have the exact same center, which makes them concentric to each other. Um, and then I made a little note, they do not have to be spaced evenly. So, appreciate your attentiveness and uh, time. I hope this was clear. Uh, if, if not, let me know, and uh, we'll try to figure out where the information is that you're missing. Um, your homework it will be given to you by the sub. It, it is also online, but uh, the sub needs to see your notes in order for you to get credit for the lesson today. So, uh, thank you again and have a great day.